Hey guys, it's Rory here, and uh, today we've got the next KSP episode. In this one, we're going to start a mission all the way to Moho. As you may know, if you saw me live streaming, um, you may know what happens, so, you know, that's going to happen. But yeah, this is the actual first launch. Um, we, you know, it's, we've tested this big launcher we made using the Mark, or size 3, size 3 meter parts which is an asparagus stage launcher, so, you know, have a go at me if you want to for using asparagus staging. But yeah, that's what we're using. And it lifts a lot of weight. Um, it can probably lift double the weight that we've got here, but I decided kind of not to, um, just because I thought, okay, yeah, we should be fine with this much. Um, so yeah, you can see there the first asparagus stage split off. These, these parts, the... Um, uh, the drop tanks basically are so heavy that we actually have to use Sepatrons to push push them off to make sure that they don't fall inwards. Um, there was there were some problems with the staging, and you probably won't actually be able to see. But uh, in between the splitters, the decouplers, the radial decouplers, and the drop tanks, there's actually one of the fuselages, the Mark. I guess I guess it's the Mark One fuselage. Uh, in between just to keep a gap between them so that when they split off they don't collide with the rocket because that's what was happening in testing uh, so yeah I'd, I'd first of all like to say if you do want to see me testing and things then I think the live stream is probably the best place for those things to stay I don't want to bring you boring stuff where I'm just testing in videos if that makes sense it's not anywhere near as interesting it's a lot harder to sort of speak over because you know it's just me trying stuff out and then laughing at it when it fails basically um, but yeah that's that's what I'm gonna I think I'm gonna keep that kind of stuff just to the live stream and anyway now I'm doing four times speed because I thought you might have wanted to see the launch at one time speed um, and yeah so I decided to put the, the launch at one time speed just so you could see uh, that this thing was pretty cool when it staged it, it looks pretty awesome Anyway, this stage actually lasts quite a long time, but we're about to end it now. Uh, I think I decided to just split it off now, yep. And you can see, with the Sepatrons, it sends them spiraling, because the Sepatrons are only on the top. Which is kind of interesting. Um, it's almost like the Soyuz, but the Soyuz actually split them off at the bottom first, and pushed them out the bottom, then split them off at the top, and then they started spinning away. I think that's how the Soyuz did it anyway, and it only had four. But yeah, I think that's what happened. I'm not 100% sure. Anyway, now we're burning at our apoapsis to try and uh, circularize the orbit. I have to burn upwards a little bit because our thrust to weight ratio is kind of a bit low at the moment because we're still carrying the whole of the cargo, but we've only got one of those big engines. But it's not too bad; it works out fine in the end. And then we've got to decide that we, you know, then we've got to go to Moho basically. And I decide that actually, if I want to go to Moho, I'm just gonna have to burn now because um, I want to go retrograde in relative to Kerbin. So that's why I did. Um, and this is probably the demise of this mission. The the fact that I didn't wait for an, a good encounter meant that this whole mission was a lot less efficient. Um, but I sort of thought, just because we were using the three meter parts, that this would be okay. So, yeah, this won't be the first, the only episode in this mini series where we go to Moho, I guess. But uh, yeah, hopefully there'll be more. Anyway. So now we're just on our escape trajectory, and uh, I probably went away from the keyboard. Oh no, I was trying to turn, I think, uh, to do something. And we actually got a moon intercept, which was kind of a pain. Didn't really help us at all, it just meant we couldn't judge our periapsis. And uh, there's a setting, actually, in the config files, which sets how many spheres of influence in advance it will show the orbit in, the predicted orbit in. But it get but the more you have, the less precise it is anyway. So I was I thought about it in the past, and I think in the past I did at once change it so that it would let me actually see, for example, there, if I wanted to see how close to Moho I could get, I would have actually been able to do it there because I was going through too many spheres of influences now. Um, but you can change the settings. That's in one of the config files somewhere. You can Google that if you want. Um, but I decided not to just because then it wouldn't be the same as all of you guys playing. 
you know, and I thought it would make it better if for tutorials and things at least there was nothing weird about my game to your, you know, in, in comparison to your game. So anyway, now what we're doing is that sort of technique where you go past your closest intercept, see when your next one is, and then work out, so it's still not catching up with us, so we need to burn a bit more, so that our orbit takes longer, so that it has time to catch up with us. I think that's the idea here. So we're going to burn, and you can see as our orbit gets bigger, the closest approaches get closer, and eventually we get one which is very, very close. In fact, it's close enough that we actually get an intercept. So, it's not the closest of intercepts, and again, this is another place where I probably could have been more efficient, but I wasn't really sure, to be honest, how big Moho is, that kind of thing. So I just kind of let it let it go, because this is the first time in a long, long time I've been to Moho. Um, and yeah, Moho is actually very, very small. <laughs> and it's I don't know if it's Minmus sized, but it's a moon anyway. It, it feels like a moon rather than a planet. Um, yeah, it's it's a small small planet. Anyway, there we go. So I finished that stage off and decouple, then uh, spin this round, and try and attach it to the other part, which doesn't have any crew in it. Remember, so that part. If I knock that other part, then that wouldn't be good. Um, so I have to kind of move and nudge this little decoupler thing out of the way, so that it doesn't interfere with the docking. And then, after that, I have to actually dock. And I have to do all that without nudging the Moho lander. Because um, originally we were going to have a sort of service module, which is the bit the crew are actually in now, and do it kind of Apollo style. Um, so I just wanted to see how it went, really. And at this point I was like, okay, we docked, now what do we do? Do we turn around? Do we you know, do anything? And then I realized that my um, my navbar was still in target mode, and for some reason, it actually hadn't docked. And you'll see in a second when they do. Yeah, here we are. I think it was about now that they actually dock. I wiggled it about, and then they docked. There we are. And uh, yeah, that kind of confused me. But now it's just time to basically burn a bit retrograde, and uh, yeah, try and get the orbit sort of not circular but not an escape trajectory <laughs> a bit less elliptic I think ecliptic elliptic elliptic I think is the right word I'm not 100% sure on that don't quote me anyway so I burnt a bit there and then just decided to leave it to my periapsis because we should be able to do a bit better or a bit more efficiently at our periapsis and yeah it kind of took a while this burn this burn wasn't fun um, it really did take a long time. This is like not exact. This is at four times speed, and you can barely see the difference in our orbit. Like you can see it changing by pixels at a time. And this is where I think I realized, okay, yeah, we're not going to be able to make a return. <laughs> this is going to be a one-way trip. Um, so now that I've sort of admitted that, I can say that there will be a rescue mission. Um, but yeah, there we go. Uh, there we are. And I realized because, you know, we're not going to make it now. I've kind of accepted that fact. I also have to think about, you know, this is just me, by the way, swapping two kerbals into the lander. I also have to think about how, what I'm going to do, because there's a kerbal up in orbit, and then there's a kerbal, um, you know, in the service module thing. So I decided in the end, to, obviously I'm still slowing down with the service module now to get us into a circular orbit and then even bring us further down than that and I decided now to just decouple um, and just keep the you know command pod service module thing on the lander which I thought was kind of clever because in, in comparison to some of the ideas the twitch chat had anyway it was uh, like making him sit on the ladder you know who you are <laughs> And uh, yeah, that that I, th I thought it was a pretty clever idea. I don't know. And we also end up trying to use RCS to slow ourselves down. So in the in the rescue mission, we're gonna have to have a more powerful engine on this. Um, because the terrain is so bumpy and so not flat, then it makes it kind of difficult 
to land with such a low thrust engine because you can't make sudden changes when you realize there's a mountain coming up. It's yeah, it's, you you have to plan it out a lot better and it's not too easy. But anyway, we're coming down now 20 30 meters a second that kind of thing. And uh yeah, it's it's you know not too difficult at landing much. Um we're landing on a very very steep hill though, so it does get problematic when we get to actually touching down. And as you can see, it fell over. Now it doesn't really matter at this point, I've kind of given up on this mission, <laughs> just because, you know, um, it's going to be a rescue mission anyway, but we managed to flip this bit around and decouple it from the uh, service module thing. So at least we can plant a flag, and uh, yeah, I'd call it sort of a success in the sense that it's at least given us some information as to how far we can actually go. Um, with that much, so it shows us that we need a lot more if we want to go, uh, if we want to actually go to, you know, a return from Moho. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video guys, uh, I hate landing on hills, and yeah, as always, thanks for watching and have a nice day.